Welcome back. It's uh, still the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Time to look at what the papers have in store for us this morning. Uh, very interesting uh, headlines on the front pages of The Punch. Uh, this day, The Guardian and The Nation newspapers. And uh, we're going to go through them first before we bring our guest uh, who is standing by. But we have G.D. Johnson uh, on the line, legal practitioner. Sorry, um, Tunde Kolaole on the line with us this morning. Apologies for that legal practitioner. Uh, Barista, good morning to you. Good morning, my brother. Hope you had a lovely night. Very well, thank you. And yours? Uh, it was okay. All right. You, you so we're struggling with the power supply. Yes, I can imagine. I can imagine. But you sound quite energetic and up the, upbeat this morning. I can't wait to get your thoughts on what the papers have to say. Let's start off with a punch, a newspaper that has the following uh, uh, headlines. The big story on the front page, budget deficit rises 300 and 70 percent <laughs> hits 47 trillion naira under buhari budget deficit rises 370 percent hits 47 trillion naira under buhari the rider to that president to pass uh, on 15.62 billion dollar euro bond repayments to the next government that's a quite a nice way to welcome the next government <laughs> more from the paper ballot paper local printers set to sue INEC. local printers set to sue INEC. commission extends pvc collection till january 29 i'm sure that's why lawyers like uh you to nicola uh, would always be smiling to the bank <laughs> because we have these court cases around but we have more edg woos spanish investors for seven oil blocks fg woos spanish investors for seven oil blocks 648 cases brought against President FG, AGF, that's according to the AGF. It says uh, 648 cases brought against the President and the federal government. More from the paper, be guided by diplomatic practice, FG urges envoys. Gunmen kill four a number of vigilantes, bomb five buildings, and uh, EFCC shortlists 26 bidders for forfeited assets. EFCC shot lists 26 bidders uh, for forfeited assets. Uh, some of the stories on front page of the punch. Let's move over to this day uh, on Friday with these headlines. Big one. Again, Buhari warns foreign missions against interference in Nigeria's politics. Says nation working with ECOWAS to secure region halt coups. Uh, Spain to collaborate with Nigeria in insecurity fight. Confess posthumous award on late envoy Seriki, uh, Silva seeks help to tackle insecurity in all sector. Of course, um, these foreign envoys were uh, welcomed by the president in a huge ceremony. The punch had some of the pictures on its uh, front page, um, the paper we earlier looked at. More from this day, CBN intensifies nationwide awareness on redesigned Naira, uh, insists new banknotes have come to stay, sensitizes Onicha traders, Kano grain marketers, others <laughs> on security features of new notes. Maintains new 1,500 and 200 naira can only be dispensed through ATMs. Interesting one. INEC extends deadline for collection of PVCs to January 29. NEC. Disco's collected 188 billion naira as revenue out of 265 billion billed in Q2 2022. Next one. OB, we will destroy structure of criminality, build new Nigeria, says PDP APC, field Nigerians, insists lecturers won't go on strike under him. <laughs> promises insurance for security agencies. Interesting promises there by a presidential candidate and the final story from this day your allegations against me unfortunate monarch replies kogi government we'll leave them with that one as we move on to the next paper the guardian uh, it leads with this headline on the front page of the guardian uh, banks defy cbn continue issuing old naira notes banks defy cbn continue issuing old naira notes any surprises there um right as to that new banknotes still scanty only one out of nine banks in boko issuing new notes in Benue, new notes treated as souvenirs 
Kenu customers tackle cashiers over mutilated notes. Long queues at ATMs paying new naira. Apex Bank kicks off sensitization program at the riders for that headline. Interesting ones there. Next one from The Guardian. You've lost Igbo support over comments. SERG tells Tinubu. Uh, Sawolu promises better tomorrow if re-elected. Better tomorrow <laughs> if re-elected. It reminds me of a uh, uh, better life for uh, rural women. I don't know if you all remember that one of the late uh, Miriam Babangida. Let's go on. Gunmen kill four uh, or four vigilantes raise buildings in Anambra bomb attack. Gunmen kill four vigilantes raise buildings in Anambra attack. And uh, interesting big story from the Guardian on Friday. Um, their big story, you know, we have it on pages four and five of the paper. Their focus is on Ajokuta steel plant. I don't know if you're tired as I am of hearing about Ajokuta steel plant. But what the paper says is Ajokuta steel plant, steel plant rather, uh, like refineries, a story retold, promises unkept. Um, you see a picture of the Russian president alongside the Nigerian president. That itself tells a story. You can read uh, more uh, from uh, The Guardian if you can grab a copy. More, I think the final one from that paper, I never wanted third term presidency, says Obasanjo. I think we need to pause and reflect on that. I never wanted third term presidency, says Obasanjo. That's just uh, at the bottom of that screen. Uh, sorry, it's out of your shot, but we'll look at that as we go on. Let's move over to um, the final paper this morning, and that happens to be The Nation. Uh, newspaper which always has a political slant because of the season we're in. The big story on the front page millions of uncollected PVCs force INEC to shift deadline. Millions of uncollected PVCs force INEC to shift deadline. Uh, 13.87 million cards printed for valid registrants. Agency probes Alex extortion. And it's interesting way the paper is describing INEC's extension, which gives another. Uh, angle to the whole situation. More from the paper. Rejection of new Naira notes not a crime. Oh, sorry. Rejection of new Naira notes a crime. CBN warns. I wonder why I was reading there. Rejection of new Naira notes a crime. CBN warns. Troops killed 50 terrorists in three weeks, says DHQ. Um, uh, AGF, 6.32 million pounds, 5.5 million euros, and $390 million looted France recovered in seven years. I don't know, for some reason, I, my mind always tells me that the AGF is always mentioned alongside money in the news, alongside money. Um, Senate urges federal government to stop borrowings. Uh, NLC, TUC, others endorse Tinubu, Sangolu. Um, why I can't campaign for Obi by Obasanjo? <laughs> Gunmen demand 10 million naira ransom on Oshun farmers. Uh, to the call away, in order not to take too much more time, I'll stop at that and come over to you. Let's start with Olushego Obasanjo, or like uh, Chief Tom Kimi said, you know, that popular, that famous uh, PDP primary at Eagles Square Abuja then, Obasanjo, 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 Obasanjo. Um, on the front page of the nation, at the bottom, he says that um, why I won't campaign for B, that's the first one. And then on the front page of The Guardian, he says, I never wanted third term presidency. The man never fails to grab the headlines, even though he's not the president anymore. What are your thoughts on these two stories? Well, let's look at the audio is not uh, too good. Can you repeat the question, please? All right. On the front page of The Nation, Obasanjo says, uh, why I can't campaign for Obi? That's the story okay. there. Okay. Yes, why I can't campaign for Obi by Obasanjo. And then... Uh, on the front page of the Guardian, he says, "I never wanted third-term presidency." Says Obasanjo. Where Chief Olusha Obasanjo, or do you call him General Olusha Obasanjo, or is he President Olusha, former President Olusha Obasanjo? We should call him. He is a man of uh, <clears throat> many columns, uh, so to say, and a man that is uh, in my humble opinion. Uh, could be very, very difficult uh, to, to, to predict. Sadly, too, he is a man, I am of the opinion, likes to play to the gallery uh, in the sense that uh, if you have adopted a man, or you say, look, this is about the right candidate for the nation at this crucial period in time, I don't see any reason why we should not um, uh, be ready 
to campaign for such a, a candidate. Campaign comes in different form. It's not just by mounting the soapbox uh, and traveling all over the place that you can campaign for a candidate. You could uh, take advert for him. You could uh, go to some of these uh, 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 plant companies, churches, mosques, and what have you. You can even print uh, leaflets in respect of the candidate that you have adopted. And then distribute the leaflet uh, to be able to campaign them in, to be able to see through. Uh, your wish is that that kind of person should win election. So, why President Lucia Kompas has taken this to Shema Mbulu opinion? It's not good for his post challenge as, um, as uh, a man who has adopted a uh, former governor of you for the presidential aspirant of the, of the LP. With regard to his saying that he doesn't want the presidency, well, that uh, flies there in the air. Why do I say that flies in the air? You and I will remember that there was this allegation, very, very strong allegation for that matter, that has been made by uh, senators who said they were approached just um, um, a few days ago. Governor Jules Okalu uh, came out to say that the uh, you know, you approached him for a third time agenda. He also recollect that uh, Rufai had also made a similar allegation. Vito for some other governorship and I mean, for some other governor who said they were approached um, for a third term. Agenda. So when Jerusalem Gobert did not begin to say that he really doesn't want the presidency and all that, I'm not too sure that um, he is uh, being uh, honest with the Nigerian people. But that is neither here nor there. Whether he wants this or not, the issue today is that this country is bedeviled with a lot of problems economically, socially, politically, and all that. And if anybody has a formula with which you can regulate out of these challenges and what happens, I should think such a man should put his hand on the plow and do everything possible that um, we find solutions to the mirage of problems confronting uh, the nation. Uh, the also go back to not, not willing to campaign. For a candidate that he has adopted, the man who looks like you know, uh, somebody who really wants to eat his cake and also still have it. He's a kind of standing on the fence. So that if at the end of the day, Obi loses, uh, it will be too difficult to really indict uh, Jerusha Gobatujo or to say that um, Gobatujo has failed in his campaign uh, to see Obi true as, uh, as Mr. President. He has done similar things in the past. I remember at some period in time, he has um, said he forgave, he forgave I mean, he forgave uh, Atiku Abubaka, but at the end of the day, he didn't uh, really campaign for Atiku Abubaka. And also when um, Ashwadi Bolat, you know, who she returned him and all that, the feeling that we got, especially from Bajati Amina, was that uh, Robert Nino was disposed to a Tinubu presidency. So this speaking from both sides of the mouth, uh, the man of Bulo, you know, doesn't know for the image of Johnson Gopasa and does not help the Nigerian people in any form. All right. Uh, he said he never wanted third term presidency. He said? He says he never wanted a third term presidency. But he never wanted to be president. Third term. Third term presidency. It's on the front page of The Guardian. You can repeat that. I'm not hearing. Okay. The second story I actually comment on, to comment on is uh, the one on the front page of The Guardian. Uh, I never wanted third term presidency, says Obasanjo. I never. No, I, have done, uh, I have done some analysis of that. I said, look, people like Oji Zokalu have come out to say that Obasanjo approached him to, 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 for a third term presidency. And if I also came out to say that Obasanjo approached him for a third term presidency. And you also recall there has been some other governor who said that he approached them for, for a third term presidency. I am not too sure that all these um, uh, well meaning Nigerians. Or Nigerians that we can say are men of timber and caliber who just sit down in the confines of their offices or their homes and begin to cook up this allegation that Obama Fajo really wanted the third time presidency. And of course, too, the former Speaker of the House of Representatives also came out that uh, Obama Fajo was desperate to have the third term presidency. The argument that he, he was said to have made at that period in time was that uh, his first time in office, he merely used it to please the Nigerian politicians who imposed on him all manners of people as ministers, as advisors, and as chairmen of, um, 
of uh, Panatata and Boss. And it was only during the second time that he really put his hand on the plow and began to do the work of the presidency and what happened. So it's for him to compensate for the four years of his uh, first term of presidency that he never had uh, total control over what he wanted to do. That he was said to have been desperate. But that was the argument he was said to have made for his first term of presidency. But you see, that flies in the air in the sense that in a country of 200 million people, it's going to be full of or not to tidy. Because just one thing we the leader to think and believe that he solely alone has uh, the answer to all the problems that the uh, development that uh, is confronting Nigeria as a nation. Uh, the, the next president, wh whoever it is of Nigeria, whoever becomes the next, will have a, a gift, you know, handed over to them from uh, uh, President Buhari. You know, the Bible tells us of the three wise men who went to Jesus Christ, baby Jesus, uh, bearing gifts. This time, it's uh, President Buhari passing a gift on to the next president. Uh, 47 trillion naira current uh, debt. All right, this is on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Budget deficit rises to 370, rises 370%. Sorry, hits 47 trillion naira. So one of the gifts that we passed over to the next president will be uh, humongous debt profile of the federal government, and including the euro bond. Uh, they have about $15.62 billion euro bond repayments that will be due, and they're going to hand the payment or repayment of that to the next administration. How, how difficult will it be for whoever becomes Nigeria's president to do anything and to succeed in, in four years? Tunde Kolo, what do you think? Chief uh, the Chancellor of the University and Eldite Lawyer, uh, not too long ago, very uh, spoke very eloquently with regard to the challenges that the nation is facing, and then uh, what might be confronting whoever, whatever parties win the next election, and ever become the president of Nigeria, with the mountain of death that the Nigerian nation now has on its uh, head. According to the prognosis of uh, Chief Aveva Falola, now what the next government probably will require to do is what Obasan just did when he was so similarly confronted with a huge death when he became the president. You see that you go to some of these death nations to go and plead with them, to go and beg them, to go and process before them, to write off some of these deaths uh, and all that. And if they are not willing to do that, you might need to go there and then also lobby them to reduce or to, to kind of um, cut and uh, take lesser amount of money for whatever amount of money that you might be owing them. But that is going to be a difficult exercise. Difficult in the sense that if uh, nations and countries and organizations have done that before for you, and then you haven't learned any lessons from me, if you went out again to start filing up debts and all that, I'm not too sure that anybody will be willing to either reduce or amortize or to even, even wait whatever uh, debt Nigeria may be owing them. Because Nigeria, it will appear to be behaving like a political son who hasn't learned anything. And when people forgive your debt, as organization, as individual, and as a nation, and all that, it is not uh, an easy thing at all. It is the taxpayers, the taxpayers of the forgiving nation, that is going to be chosen the responsibility for those uh, uh, debts in terms of the amount of taxes that they may have to pay to really be able to sort up or to really be able to cover the gap that the money or the debt that has been forgiven is going to be created in their own national budget or in their own GDP or in the head of their nation, as a valid, uh, or as a going uh, uh, concern. Well, for me, uh, any politician who is coming into office this time around and all that, already knows the challenges that is, um, that is uh, before him. I would want to say that with uh, good uh, management, I would want to say that uh, with uh, prudent uh, management of resources and ability to cut um, our clothes according to the size of our clothes, it is still possible to manage some of these widgets and all that. Why am I saying this? The little study that I have done uh, over the years has shown me that uh, when Nigeria makes a budget and all that, that less than 20% of what we budget for annually actually goes into uh, carrying out whatever responsibility, whatever infrastructure, whatever we want to do as a nation. The remaining 80% ends up in individual people's uh, 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 pocket. You should also remember that when budgets are taken to the National Assembly for approval and what happens, all manners of pardon goes into it. And there has also never been a year 
in which Nigeria fully implemented um, its uh, annual budget. Most times the budget is implemented to the tune of less than 30 percent of what uh, the National Assembly approved for. What that what that tells us as a nation is that uh, we can do with lesser money than we actually been budgeting for in all these previous years and all that. Because like I said, most of those money end up in private pockets in terms of uh, funding, in terms of um, uh, project, I mean, contracts that are awarded that are never executed, in terms of abandoned project, in terms of inflation of contracts. You should also remember, especially what we have from President Goodluck Jonathan, that he was visiting South Africa. And when he got to South Africa, he made an inquiry as he got how much it cost them to build their international airport. And when you compare what was used to build the international airport and what we used to do renovation in Nigeria, they were way, way far apart. And they were far apart simply because in here, in Nigeria here, most of our budget are inflated to the tune of the under, if not a thousand percent. And when you have contractors, but I have been able to ask a few of them questions and other, they say they look, they inflate the cost of this contract because, I mean, simply because most time when they execute contracts, for two, three, four years and all that, the government never gets to pay them. Okay. Where are the loans that they take from the bank and all that? And we, we, we continue to, 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 to accrue. It's, it's a bad and situation. To the Furthermore, yeah. the cost of borrowing money in Nigeria is also to the tune of 35 percent. Whereas in other countries of the world, you don't require more than, I mean, interest rate is uh, between 2 percent, 2 and a half percent to 5 percent. But here in Nigeria, it's compound interest, 35 percent. I don't see how any businessman can execute a contract or supply government, I mean, execute government business and all that without inflating the contract. So, that is, these are some of the areas right. we require to look at. Interesting. Nigeria's debt is manageable. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the money that we budget for, and now we are borrowing, is uh, being filtered away to one diversion or the other. So, I think with prudent management, and with a man who puts himself, uh, uh, who has, uh, who is well meaning, or who intends to really uh, achieve his programs and goals and all that. And who has the interest of the Nigerian people like that? I think Nigeria's problems, or Nigeria's debt is not in so right. Right. Nigeria's problems with regard to debt. Thank you, Chidabale. Thank you very much. Interesting thoughts and, uh, you know, uh, uh, some of the facts you put out there. Very interesting indeed. Let's take a, yeah. another one. Uh, the Guardian gives a very, very good expose on what is going on right now with the, the, the tales of the new Naira. Let's call it that. Not tales by moonlight, but tales of the new Naira. Uh, it says the banks are, are defined the CBN uh, and continuing as they continue to issue old Naira notes. Um, they're talking about uh, scar scarcity. Uh, of, of the new banknotes and that uh, the banks can't even load their ATMs with those new banknotes. Um, what are your thoughts on, on, on this, this difficulty in accessing new banknotes? Despite CBN saying, oh, we have them and we just load them in the ATMs, you go there, you get it. Honestly speaking, when you look at both the Bible and the Quran, hmm, they tell us that we must, uh, no matter the circumstances, respect our leaders and be reverent uh, uh, to them. But when you think uh, critically about what we have done with uh, beginning to design the Naira as the wee hours of this government and all that, you begin to question the rationale and then the concept and also the, the, the purity or the sanity of the mind uh, that went into uh, really saying that uh, at this wee hour is when we should be designing the Naira. No. We are talking about a country that is, uh, is, uh, is a bankrupt uh, that has no money to render service, to pay salaries, and also execute their contracts and all that. What the Nigerian nation should be pursuing, and that is what most other countries are pursuing, is a cashless policy. So if you are pursuing a cashless policy, and that, if that should be the program, why are you now concentrating on wasting resources on um, redesigning the Naira? But what happens? What is the, the, the what goal do they want to achieve with redesigning the Naira? No. For me, it looks like a white elephant project one of these procedure projects which General Buhari did the first time when he was military head of state. At that period in time, he said a lot of people are holding the Naira, I mean, the currency at that period in time at home, except it tanked, uh, you know, in the ceilings of their homes and all that. And in order to render whatever they may have stolen and kept away from circulation useless, he changed the money, I mean, he changed the Naira at that period in time. But you see, this is not in 1983, in 1985. We are in the year... 2023. And most time when people steal money, they don't keep them at home in Naira. Most time they go to the black market, buy dollars, buy euro, 
buy pants, talent, and what have you. And then they, they, because those money are stable, they, their value don't depreciate as quickly as our as our own. They are also very small in terms of um, their design and and, and the type. They are easily to keep. So when you go out and say because you want to render useless whatever people may have started somewhere or put on in their safety tanks at home and all that, you haven't done a good analysis All right. of the challenge. The the thank attack. you very much. We, we are out of time. Where is the yeah, capacity we have to go to the Nigerian Nigeria printing and minting corporation to print enough money to put in circulation? Furthermore, I also read in some papers that the contract for the, the designer of the Naira note were awarded to certain persons and all that. For God's sake, when you award that kind of contract to, to, to individuals and what happened, what is the guarantee that they might not be uh, right. printing some for themselves and then putting in circulation? To the, to the color, we, we, we have to go. For the, that's the much you can Men take. Uh, to the, can you hear me? Yes, sorry, because of time. We have to pull the plugs. Well, you've raised some very important points, and uh, you've taken us down memory lane, talking about money being hidden in septic tanks and all that. <laughs> uh, that was uh, 1983, 84, 85. Uh, it's uh, uh, almost, for, almost 40 years uh, or, or, uh, from then. Um, but we, 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 we will look at what happens as uh, time goes on, um, you know, as far as policy is concerned. Uh, I don't know if you've been able to lay your hand on it. No, a failure. <laughs> uh, do you have do you, do you have the new note? The policy. Do you have a copy of the new note? Maybe have you withdrawn from an ATM? Yes, I have. Uh, I have uh, been giving uh, a few of it when I went to bank to cash a little money, and uh, just like some other Nigerians have complained, the policy, the durability, and then the printing is, uh, smears your hand. That is to see the color, uh, the, the, the view for some of these things. When you rub the, your hand, a hat on me, or you have a little mustard on your hands and all that, the color comes off um, uh, too easily. And I want to say that the ordinary lady, that shouldn't be the case. All right, that says about the quality of the printing mm. that has been talk. Mm. And if you are talking about durability, how would that kind of a know that it may be uh, right. Uh, be able to live long in circulation. All right, Tunekolo, yes, thank you very much. Uh, hey, I haven't, uh, uh, the last time I withdrew from the ATM was old notes. Let's see what, what happens, because if you say a CBN do one thing, the banks can't do it because they don't have the notes, then it means that your policy has already failed. But thank you for your time, Tunekolo, and we hope to have you again next week. Do have a fantastic weekend. Um, sir. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll be back with our first major conversation. We'll look at the UK boarding schools week uh, and an educational uh, exhibition, schools exhibition holding in Lagos, Nigeria. Stay with us.